This conference will now be recorded. All right. So in the last session, what we did, we created business partner and vendor with same number. BP vendor with same number range and different number range. Different number range. We've covered both the scenarios. Now, what we'll try to do, we'll try to create a transaction in the vendor account, and we will see how this transaction is reflecting in your different different reports. So, what I'll record: finance transactions in a vendor account. Okay, so why we are specifically writing finance transactions? Because it is non PO transactions. Because it is non PO transaction. Right. I think your uh, this one is coming, Echo Raju. If you are on a laptop, also just mute that one or close your audio on the laptop. Okay, so we are calling it as finance transaction because these are non PO related transactions wherever you have purchase order That is where your major vendor related transactions take place in a real environment Your major activity from a vendor is what purchases or procurement Yes, sir. major Activity from a vendor is procurement through purchase order okay this is the major activity that is carried out with any vendor account in a real environment but since we are practicing now we are at the beginning stage of accounts payable we are not proceeding with the purchase order related transaction instead we will start our accounts payable with finance transaction wherein there is no purchase order involvement and we will be posting the transactions directly in the vendor account non purchase order transactions or finance related transactions in short fi invoice and you also call it as po invoice for this let's assume the vendor which vendor we created yesterday which is Volkswagen, Volkswagen we've created and this is the vendor code this is our vendor so what i'll do i'll put some transactions here now so far while creating the master record what is the major term that we were using while creating the vendor master record are we directly calling it as a vendor or we are calling it as a bp business partner bp business partner right while creating a vendor you are talking about a term called bp or business partner once you create a business partner and once you assign a vendor role to the business partner now your bp has become vendor correct yes sir. when you create a business partner this is only a business partner but the moment you assign vendor role to the business partner your business partner will be converted as a vendor now from there onwards whatever you do with your vendor is called as vendor only you will nowhere call this as a business partner at once vendor role is assigned you will see everywhere it as a vendor as you saw it in ecc system there is no change you will find this change only during your master record creation once your master is created everything is called as vendor or supplier clear yes sir now, let's say first thing that we will do is vendor invoice creation with normal screen and 
single screen. Similarly, vendor credit memo creation. This is also normal screen and single screen. Next is your vendor down payment creation. This is with request and without request. When I say with request, I mean down payment request. You can create a vendor down payment with down payment request. You can also create without a request. Next one. Vendor payment creation. This is again. With printout and without printout. Vendor reports. Line item. Balance. History. All these points is what you have to understand from vendor transaction perspective from FI side from the finance point of view. Let us see one by one. First, we'll try to create vendor invoice. Now, basically to create a vendor invoice, what should happen? What is supposed to happen from a business point of view? We need to receive the invoice. We need to receive invoice. invoice. To receive invoice, what should happen? What should have been the activity? Goods procured or services procured. Now we are talking all this from a finance point of view. So there is no purchase order. So either you should have procured goods or you should have procured services through an order or direct purchase. This is through an order or a direct purchase. For a finance invoice, do we place any order, any purchase order, or there is no purchase order? Both scenarios are possible. Now we are talking exclusively finance transactions. So this is exclusive okay. finance transaction, which means there no, is no purchase no. order. Okay. Right? We are talking exclusively non purchase order related vendor transactions PO is so for this vendor creation we should have purchased some goods or services it's called as a direct purchases direct procurement without placing an order now let's say i'll write first february 2023 Purchase of stationary items from any name, I'll say universal bookstore okay, i'll say purchase of stationary items from universal bookstore now let's look at only these points i'll say some 12000 rupees i'll say some 12000 rupees 
now when you know this transaction by looking at this what do you understand is it a purchase transaction or a sale transaction purchase transaction it is a purchase transaction now first thing that you record this purchase transaction in sap you need some prerequisites it is not possible for us to straight away get into a company code and record a vendor invoice before you create this vendor invoice there are certain prerequisites for posting vendor invoice first is ap baseline config what is part of your ap baseline config account groups number ranges assignment of number ranges bp creation bp Okay, so you need account group, number range, number range assignment, BP group, BP number range, customer vendor integration CVI, tolerance group of customer and vendor, GL, reconciliation GL account, master data of your vendor, document types, number ranges, profit center, cost center, masters. Is this correct? Should we have all yes. this before creating a vendor invoice? Yes, sir. Right. Tomorrow, somebody might ask you what is the prerequisite or what settings are to be in place before creating a vendor invoice. If you tell only the three points, vendor account group, vendor number range, vendor number assignment BP, then you might get another question. Is this all or anything else is needed? Then they might start putting you small, small tricky questions. Should we create a vendor master? Vendor master is not needed. Because you are talking about a point where you have to capture this transaction on SAP, correct? The intention is to record this transaction. For this transaction to be recorded in SAP, what and all is needed? So whether it is a small setting, master data, whatever it is, you must be aware of it. Because this is a prerequisite without which the transaction cannot be recorded. Now, let us try to record this transaction in this universal bookstore do we have a vendor called universal bookstore oh, sir. first thing that you have to look at is you need to check in which vendor you are going to record the transaction and do not blindly record a transaction just like that entering the screen and opening whatever the vendor you get posting for whatever the amount you want never do such kind of practice Always write down one case, one scenario along with the date. Whenever you are writing any transaction, especially related to accounts payable or accounts receivable, dates will have a key role. You should never ignore the dates. You should not post of any random date. You, you must be very clear with your date. So assuming we are creating this on 1st February, which means we purchased on 1st February. What did we purchase? We purchased stationary items from whom we purchased we purchased from universal bookstore this transaction is telling you what product or service has been purchased and who supplied this product or service correct huh? yes sir no. 
I'll say product or service. So this is a product purchase, and this product is your stationery, right? What is this stationery? Is this an asset or an expense? Expense. This is expense. Because this is a consumable product. You're not going to sell stationery, right? You are going to consume the stationery, you are going to use the stationery. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Your stationery is a consumable product, and this is your expense in nature. Fine. And supplier or vendor. Who is your supplier or vendor? Universal bookstore. And your purchase date. When did we purchase? First February 2023. Is this correct? Date of purchase is first February 2023. Next is your mode of payment. How did we pay this? Because it's a finance invoice, which means it should have already been paid in majority of the cases. Let's say this is cash payment or bank payment. Right? You have to be very specific. Either we paid cash or we paid bank. Payment due date. immediate 30 days 45 days or 60 days something like this you must know these are all mandatory points before you create any transaction for a vendor and you must be aware of this without knowing this if you are creating a transaction then you are wrong clear now, according to yes. our scenario, we assumed that we purchased a stationery. Stationery is a consumable item, which is an expense. You purchased from Universal Bookstore. Universal Bookstores become a supplier or vendor to you. And your purchase date was 1st February 2023. Your mode of payment, we, have, we will discuss this at the time of a payment a transaction. Normally, you can either pay through cash or you can pay through bank. When you're paying through cash, it's straightforward. When you're paying through bank, again, it has got two classifications. Whether you are doing a bank transfer or you're issuing a bank check. Right? From bank payment, there are two options. One is your bank transfer from your account to vendor bank account. Option number two, issuing a check. You will write a check and issue to the vendor. So that mode of payment is very, very important. You have to be very specific. You have to be very particular about it while recording the payment transaction. And your payment due date. When is this invoice due? You just like that, you cannot record the payment transaction unless you know the due date. So you will come to know the due date based on the invoice. Every invoice will have the due date on it. Am I correct? Any invoice that you look at from a vendor will have due date. You have to look at the due date and according to the due date, you have to initiate the payment. If the invoice is due after 60 days, there is no point of issuing the payment today. You are supposed to make the payment after 60 days. I mean, within 60 days. Now, considering all these points, let us get into SAP to check how this invoice is created. For creating a finance invoice, we assumed there are two options. There is one normal screen and the other one is single screen. First, we will record using normal screen, then we'll enter single screen. Now, our intention is to create an invoice. Correct? Huh? Yes, sir. This is a business transaction. This is your business transaction which happened in an organization.
for us to record this these are all the prerequisites now first thing that we need is master data what is the master data of this vendor universal bookstore first of all do we have universal bookstore vendor no sir we do not have so you have to be aware of it there is no rule that you have to write your example of the vendor which is already existing it is not that way you can take any example at the time of creating any invoice but make sure you are aware of the process from the business point of view not only from the sap point of view if you think only from sap point of view straight away you can get into the transaction code record debit credit any amount any vendor any gl but you are wrong then you are not getting into the business point of view you are only getting into sap point of view which will not give value addition to our explanation so for this master record currently i do not know which master is created or not now this master data followed by your transaction data followed by your report vendor report these three activities are related to vendor sorry related to end user or consultant in an organization master data is created by a consultant or an end user or a business end user. user this is end user activity transaction data posting of this invoice is it a consultant duty or end user end user this is also end user generating the vendor reports verifying the vendor report who will do it consultant or end user end user End user. All these three activities are to be carried out by an end user. Now, any end user activity is part of IMG or Easy Access. Easy. Easy Access. Any transaction related to end user is carried out using Easy Access. Correct? Well, remove this easy access easy access now to get to the easy access let me log into sap s4 hana now the moment you log into sap first screen that you get is sap easy access all this easy access is related to end user area all the end user activities you will find here now what is our intention our intention is to create a transaction related to which module accounts payable here do you want to create a vendor invoice vendor invoice is part of which module accounts payable am i correct accounts payable is part of what is it part of fico mm sd fico right accounts payable is part of fico now always remember when you are on sap easy access you are responsible only for accounting you are responsible for what these are all called as nodes n o d e access accounting node clear you are responsible for which node accounting and if you open accounting if you expand this you will find different things inside this we are responsible for financial accounting what accounting financial. financial accounting accounting note financial accounting and if you are doing anything related to controlling or co module then you will be opening this controlling which means within accounting there are different sub nodes out of all this you are going to work on 
financial accounting all fi related transactions controlling all co related transactions the remaining are all the other sub modules of finance right let me open financial accounting if i open financial accounting everything is classified according to the sub ledger or according to the sub classification of your accounting sub modules this is gl module general ledger this is accounts receivable ar module this is accounts payable ap module this is your banking this is your fixed asset right special purpose ledger we will not use nowadays additional functions and country specific functions for us to record this transaction now vendor invoice is it part of which module gl ap ar bank fixed asset ap this is part of ap is your accounts payable so you must know that you will find the transactions here accounts payable if you open the accounts payable you will find various transactions from your accounts payable okay so inside accounts payable i'll find different options document entry document account master record periodic processing reporting withholding tax information system environment and always remember to not go by the transaction codes in the initial first at least know the path where are the transactions related to accounts payable and accounts receivable so since we are talking about accounts payable now we are on accounting on easy access financial accounting accounts payable module in which document entry but before creating a transaction we need to know if our vendor is existing or not to check if the vendor is existing or not there should be a logic there should be a mechanism correct your vendor master is part of which heading on this is it part of document entry document account master record it should be part of which node master record master record so let me open master record if you open the master record you will find all the traditional transactions which means the legacy transactions of your ecc version fk01 fk02 fk03 and all right now do you get bp code here so normally we see that vendor is all about bp but do you get bp here no no sir right it is still vendor only okay let me go to display because i want to know if this vendor is existing or not what you need to do is you just need to double click on this or you select this click on enter here or you can type the code here fk03 i'm just double clicking on this display supplier so what i'll do i'll give our company code aj10 and then i'll open the drop down list company code is aj10 and this is vendor i'll place my cursor on the vendor i'll click on search how many vendors are created currently two there are only two vendors created currently what are those two vendors ops back end and dell computers do we have our vendor created no no right our vendor is not yet created so what we need to do first we need to create our vendor master record I'll go back. So I'll click on FK01, create master record. So 
So the moment I click on vendor master record FK01, it is giving a message redirecting to transaction BP as FK01 is absolute. Only FK01 is absolute. The remaining things are open. Now, this is an organization. Let me take this as an organization. Okay. So for vendor, which role are we supposed to use? FLVN01. FLVN00. 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 But system is proposing a different role. If you go ahead with this, then you're wrong. I will go ahead with FLVN00. Now, this is giving a message. Do you want to create a business partner in BP? role vendor flvn00 or do you want to save it first in bp role vendor for abrl and then change it so i'll straight away go to create this okay so this is the role i'll pick pp vendor V001 is our local vendor. I'll select this Universal Bookstore. Universal, if I come down, street number, Universal Street, postal code, some number, city, I'll say. Country India and then region, which is nothing but your state. Thirty six Telangana communication language, I'll pick English. Enter. No error message here. Now, currently, we are updating address tab. Now, I'll click on vendor general data. The moment I clicked on vendor general data, currently there is no number here. Do you find any number? No. But yesterday in the previous session, when we created vendor using a BP transaction code, the moment you are here on the vendor general data tab, we were able to see the vendor number. Because you have saved it. Right? No. We were able to see the vendor number because through BP, first we have created BP master. Later on, we assigned vendor role. Because of your CVI settings, customer vendor integration settings, system is able to identify for this BP what will be the vendor code. Here, straight away, you are on vendor role. We did not create BP role 000000. Agree? We did not put standard BP role, all zeros. This role we did not put. Straight away we are on this role. Now I'll go to company code. I'll give company code HA10. So far the vendor number is not identified yet. That is why it is still showing as internal. Reconciliation account. Let me pick accounts payable local. Sort key, I'll put 001. Let me try to save this. If you look at this, what happened? There are two numbers generated, if you observe carefully. What is your vendor code generated? Fifteen one double zero double zero one zero five. This is the vendor code generated, but what is the business partner code? Is it the same or it is different? It is different. It is different. Correct? Now, yeah. why this is different? Because for the first scenario for local vendors, we had assumed a scenario wherein your BP number and your vendor number are different. Right. That is why you are getting two different number ranges for BP and vendor. But for the foreign vendor, what we did? 
we did BP number and vendor number same. So according to this, is our setting working fine? Even though you are on BP screen through FK01, you are able to create with single role, business partner code and vendor code. Now let me open this. By default, it has generated two, two groups. BP general it is created and accounting vendor also it is created. If you come through BP transaction code, you will have to do this in two steps. Now, whatever we have done, what we did initial screen, did we put FLV and double zero directly or we put all zeros first? Which role is assigned? FLV and double zero we have assigned. FLV and double zero we have assigned through that system has already taken this BP general rule directly. So this is the advantage if you are coming directly from FK01. If you are going directly through BP, what will happen? First, you need to create this role, general role. After that, you will have to assign the vendor role. This role has to be manually assigned going from display to change mode of the business partner. Remember the same thing that we did for two vendors which we created in the previous sessions. BP role was created first later on the other roles are extended. Okay, now let's try to record a transaction for this vendor. This is the vendor number. This is the vendor number. Now I got to know the vendor number. Now I need to know the product stationary. I need stationary GL account. Correct FS double zero. FS zero zero. Not authorized FS double zero. FSP is to So this is there is some authorization error. Okay. Maybe some role change has happened in the user ID. Now this is again one more point that you have to understand. I am trying to open a transaction code, but am I able to open it? No. What message are we getting? You are not authorized to use the transaction FSP is to you are not you are not authorized to use transaction now this is again a common problem which end user faces in a real environment whenever they say this problem what you need to know is you need to know which role is missing for the user for that what you have to do whenever this authorization related problem comes you have to ask your user to type slash in su53 what we need to ask our end user to do on their system SU 53 SU 53 when the press enter there is one more message what is this message you are not authorized use SU 53 but in real environment every user will have access to SU 53 let me open this is screen through another user ID Seems there is some change in the user masters. FS double zero. Just hold on.
Okay, I think they are making some changes. Let me check this GL account. Or before that, let's check if we are able to open the reports. Let's see. C16N. This is also not there. It will not upload through LTMC also, sir. No, no, some roles revamping is what they are doing, he is saying. Okay. No. This is what normally happens in every project for most of the end users. They will not be able to open any screen apart from what they are authorized to. If I am working in end user, role for accounts payable i will be able to open only these transaction codes whatever i am dedicated for so you click on this now it is not opening but we were just able to display this right fk03 i think this is something sure. that they're doing right now Okay, so let's talk something else meanwhile until they fix this problem. Let's write down accounting entries and accounts payable. For invoice what is the accounting entry for invoice purchase account data to vendor account credit purchase debit vendor credit is this correct Now, when you're talking about purchase debit, are we supposed to use purchase account directly or not? We are not supposed to use purchase account directly in any organization. No organization will use purchase account directly. Instead, they will have to specifically mention what is purchased. If you're telling purchase debit, now, do I know what is purchased? If you simply put purchase account debit, the other person will never know what is purchased, right? You have to be very specific what is purchased. So whenever you are purchasing, your purchase is an expense. Purchase is what? Expense. Purchase is an expense. Now, this expense can be OPEX or capex this expense can be what what is opex operating expenses opex is operating expense what is capex capital expenditure capex is capital expenditure okay now opex is a PNL account. Capex is balance sheet. Balance sheet account. You have to be very specific. Vendor account is a liability. Right under liability, this is your current liability. Clear? Yes, sir. Now, according to this, if you have to write the exact accounting entry. What did we purchase? Stationary account. Stationary account at our universal store. Stationary debit 
यूनिवर्सल बुक स्टोर क्रेडिट इज दट राइट नाउ व्हाई डिड वी डेबिट स्टेशनरी बिकॉज इट इज एन एक्सपेंस राइट सो बिकॉज इट्स एन एक्सपेंस when you are purchasing you are spending some amount there is some expense in it now this expense is again two classifications opex and capex so if your stationery is used for your internal usage that is your opex operating expense because you are going to use it for your day to day purpose if you are going to sell this stationery then this will become your capex if you want to use this stationery this will be your operating expense if you are going to sell this stationery then this will become your capital expense which means you are going to use this stationery as your inventory or as your stock currently we are not going to use our stationery as a stock correct your stationery is going to be used on a daily basis for your staff so straight away you are going to charge this to the pnl account now your universal book store is a vendor any vendor is a liability under liability this is your current liability so people might ask you interview sorry in your interview the accounting entries and the accounting impact why debit why credit clear so make sure you are also able to explain the accounting entries in your interview especially when it comes to your account determination there is a term called account determination and integrations what are this account determination and integration when somebody is asking about account determinations and integrations so that is where you are telling system which account to be debited which account to be credited for you to do it you must know the accounting impact financial impact otherwise it is not possible for us to explain now this is the accounting entry for your invoice now what about accounting entry for your credit memo under account debit purchase account credit expense account credit for credit memo whenever you record any credit memo it is straight forward reverse of your invoice your credit memo is always a reverse of invoice if purchase is debit what will happen purchase will be credited vendor will be debited okay your vendor will be debit and your purchase will be credit now the same explanation here this will come here this will go up so not writing this here is not added right. after credit memo what will be there payment payment or payment so this payment is common for both down payment and normal payment bank account payment account what will be the entry bank account credit vendor account debit vendor debit bank or cash credit
why are we debiting bank balance should be reduced right according to which accounting rule this is real account credit so this is personal account personal account debit debit the the receiver debit receiver according to this your debiting vendor account this is based on your real account credit what goes out right so people will literally expect you to talk about all this in certain companies where they want to check your accounting knowledge thoroughly and there are a lot of companies nowadays who are mainly focusing on your financial knowledge your accounting knowledge because everybody knows that on sap anybody can do it but how accurate or how good you are at the base accounting is what they want to check if you are good at accounting i can easily mold you to sap but if you are not good at accounting it is very difficult for me to mold because you will not understand the practical impact business impact from the finance or from accounting point of view so make sure you are good at this and you are able to explain it confidently if asked right these are the accounting entries that we are going to record for your accounts payable basic transactions from the finance point of view let us check this role now fs00 still the same so let me relog in still the same problem okay i think it will take some more time clear up with this accounting entries any doubt in this no sir This ID also, I don't think it is working. F S double zero. F dash forty three. I think it will take some more time. Okay. Let me stop this. I think it's better we'll continue in the evening this session from here onwards. Okay. Let me stop this recording.